Hey guys, this is Zach with Team Covenant. I'm joined by Steven and Robert, and we are here to unbox the Banners Gather. The first pack in the King's Road cycle, right? And this is a revisiting of old themes like Bannermen or Knights or Kingsguard or all kinds of stuff. We're really excited to dive into this. So we'll go ahead and kick it off. Um, unique Baratheon character, Alistair Florent. Three cost, three strength, military power icon, Bannerman Lord, Holy Crest, any Important. phase. Mm -hmm. What do you say? Important. Ah, Holy yeah. Crest, yeah. In, <laughs> any phase, discard a card from your hand to choose a character. Till the end of the phase, that character gets plus three strength during power challenges for each Bannerman character you control. Uh, you know, I don't know. The the effect that any phase isn't isn't blowing the world up, mm -hmm. uh, but it is. It's a holy crest. Uh, it's a three cost for three strength icon. Unique. It, it's a holy crest. Yeah. Uh, it's a holy crest again. Yeah. That is really what this card is to me. And, and it's a Baratheon. I mean, this, this ability is, is powerful. Any kind of strength raising that goes on always makes the battle math impossible. Mm -hmm. if not hard. Like you're gonna throw somebody in to make them discard a card that probably doesn't matter. Yeah. No, you're not. And then if you got a one of power challenge by four or more, or heaven forbid eight or more, <laughs> for certain effects, uh, then wonder what he does you're it. referencing. Yeah, <laughs> I think you know. I don't think you have to build because he's a bannerman. I don't think you have to build a bannerman deck to make him useful. Mm -mm. Yeah. If he, if you draw him, even a single copy, put him on the board. He is holy, which fits into some really nice Baratheon decks. Mm -hmm. And then he can always discard a card for plus three. Boom. Not bad. Solid. Yeah, Not it's, a bad it's, it's effect on the board. It, yeah. yeah. You're, pr you're probably never going to use this every time. But your opponent, know, like you have three or four cards in hand, you attack your opponent knowing that it's like, yeah. <sighs> dang it. He's yeah. also a wonderful blocker. Mm -hmm. And let's not forget that the Baratheons have some sweet recursion going on. That's right. Um, so discarding is less Discarding of can be an okay thing for them. So overall, I'll give that a, a solid card. <laughs> nice. That's a Great. solid card. Uh, we're going to move on to the Brightwater Keep here. One cost, unique location. It is a stronghold that has no attachments on it. In response, after a card is discarded from a player's hand, you have Brightwater Keep to return that card to its owner's hand. It's crazy. That's really good. Mm -hmm. uh, this has a lot of great uses. I mean, already the synergy with Alistair, discard a card, put it back in your hand, and then you can do it again or not. Your yeah. choice. Uh, so this is really fantastic. Uh, I, I like it. <laughs> I, I like mean, it a lot. Let alone synergies with other cards, but just purely based on an intrigue challenge. Yeah. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, if you grab that card, I really didn't want you to grab really anything. If I can use it once and I'm not planning on discarding anything else, it's like, <laughs> all right. I'm just going to go ahead and say, I hope that this means that the Laughing Storm is going back on the restricted list. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I wouldn't mind it. Yeah. Would mind. Now, a quick question, and I, I really need to read the Laughing Storm. And usually when I see that card, I just. You know, it, I go red that. with anger. <laughs> uh, but I can you trigger things like Alistair Florent, discard a card from your hand to do X? You cannot. Yeah, because you have to pay discard. the cost because it's not sure. actually hitting the discard pile. You so could if he was Nels. That's good. Yeah. And I feel like this is kind of a secondary way of balancing cards that are problematic mm -hmm. is give Baratheon players a lot of great stuff that involves discarding cards. Therefore, yeah. it's like, well, I don't really want to run, run <laughs> Laughing Storm. I can't play with the new stuff. That's true. <clears throat> All right. Do that, Baratheon players. <laughs> next Please up. stop playing the laughing story. Yeah, right? Um, <laughs> Into the Breaches. Next, it is a uh, event, a Baratheon event, uh, though not specifically so, but obviously so. Any phase, put a Baratheon character into play from your hand. At the end of the phase, if that character is still in play, discard it. Wow. -wee. It's, yeah, it's an amazing <laughs> card. Uh, and, you know, as you said, a Baratheon event, I, I was like, well, I wonder, could you... Put unopposed Mel out mm -hmm. for a turn and win the game totally. in a Greyjoy unopposed deck or mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. any kind of an aggro deck like that that's going to really make things happen. Yep. I see what you did there. So uh, I, awesome. I like this a lot. And in Baratheon, come on. Forget like, about it. <laughs> come on. You're at, you're at nine, eight power, mm -hmm. and then you put out a fatty with Renown yeah. or Robert, mm -hmm. for goodness I, sakes. I was or, just going to say, I mean, there's so many cards that if you don't know they're coming, could be awful. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but, they're explosive uh, with power too. Just but, but I think you hit the nail on the head. The first thing I thought was uh, that unopposed Mel, and there was a, a Lannister Holy deck that was floating around. But ultimately, the Achilles' heel was that she was just so expensive. But if mm -hmm. you had something like this, mm -hmm. she comes out for nothing on that one turn where you have power of faith, and she just starts cruising with unopposed challenges, renown, yeah, Tricon. Yeah, 
it makes it nice too where you can you can probably run a plot deck that has the alliance plot in it yeah. and then you have two to three of these mm -hmm. you run the baratheons that you want and you're you're pretty much always going to have a way to get them on the board yeah uh, for n not an extra cost so totally. kind of a faux alliance with the uh, baratheon <laughs> yes. thing that's a really powerful effect it's a really powerful card for sure and yeah. it works great with red, red queen's faithful so uh -huh. that's I, all about I, that. I, I feel like paper shield is going to be more and it's more Probably right. Yeah. All right. Next up, we have three cost unique Greyjoy character, Gorald Good Brother. He's a bannerman. He's a lord. He has no uh, crest. Any phase, discard a card from your hand to choose and kneel X locations. X is the number of bannerman characters you control. Mm -hmm. and we've been over this guy before. Uh, before this pack, it was officially released. But I gotta say again, this is awesome. Yeah. Like, this effect, as it is, just as a thing, is fantastic. Heaven forbid we see any more good bannerman. It'll just be ludicrous. Discarding a card in your two locations. It's just, <laughs> it's the dream of Greyjoy Choke. Yeah. Um, it's the dream of the Captain of the Iron Fleet attachment. It's the dream of cards that are coming mm -hmm. in this pack. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I think for effects like this powerful, that you may want more Bannerman around outside just running more Bannerman, uh, you know, finding ways to give characters traits, even through uh, Songs of Dale the Bard, mm -hmm. you pick a non noble, mm -hmm. give him a trait. So you know that that turn you're going to get a kneel down. You discard two cards and kneel down four locations. Like yeah. as a target player, this is a terrifying. That can be significant. Great answer to influence right here. The thing I really like is that yes, we all know that Greyjoy is essentially the uh, aggro destruction house in Game of Thrones, but now it's turning into like the location dis control house. As Full well. control. Yeah, yeah, it's just like I'm going to lock things down if not destroyed entirely. So that's just a really cool prospect to see. Yeah, and on top of this, this is a, he's a lord, mm -hmm. which is nice because that Baelin's Rebellion event that doesn't really see a lot of play, Neil Lord to discard X location, or to, I'm sorry, Neil X locations, X the, the strength of the lord. So this guy, can you discard a card, Neil location, play that event, Neil three more locations. Yeah. It's like, whoa. And he's not an Ironborn, so he can dodge the uh, house divided. He certainly can. <laughs> certainly can. What a card. <laughs> Uh, let's move on to Hammerhorn. So one cost, unique Greyjoy location. It's a stronghold with no attachments. Uh, looks great. I mean, I love this. Look at that moon. I love the sea. That's no moon. Uh, the player with the most cards at his or her command at the beginning of the draw phase draws one less card to a minimum of one when he or she draws for that phase. I think this is solid. Like this, you could even. I mean, don't don't quote me on this. You could even potentially see a. Uh, a choke with with dreaming hammerhorn. Yeah, you you could see it, like it's possible because the the beautiful thing about choke is that a lot of times they can't play as much as they want, mm -hmm. and usually they're trying to draw into resources or stuff. So no matter how you slice it, they're either having cards in, in their hand to get answers or they're playing out resources to get ahead, yeah. and then you start to shut down the draw valve whenever mm -hmm. they do that. Uh, I think you could see this in a lot of decks, even just putting one or two in uh, most decks. I mean, Greyjoy's really live and die on potency rather than numbers. Yeah. So I think this is a great little fit for them, and you'd see it in a lot of decks for sure. Yeah, I didn't think that, like, I thought there was no negative drawback to this card. Cause yeah. It, as you said, it's about quality over quantity for Greyjoy, so if they do have more at their command, they're probably already winning anyway, so yeah. taking one less card isn't really that big of a deal. I'm, uh, I'm really interested to see how the command, the whole command, works out. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't really obviously had enough experience with sure. it to know, you know, how often is this actually useful um, and in, in particular houses, what, like, there's just all sorts of questions that arise from the command yeah. element coming into play. Into you don't the want those 27 cards in your hand. I mean, you've got to, it's, it's kind of an interesting <laughs> thing. You've got to think, the, if all things are equal, then the person who plays the most events is the one with the least card to their command. Sure. Because a, a card either becomes something on the table or something in the discard pile. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're playing on the table, it doesn't care, like your command is the same, but mm -hmm. if you discard it as an event, then it does matter. So things that actually discard for effects are ways to get you under that command value of your opponent. Mm -hmm. And even, you know, the gray trial like Longship Red Jester, where you discard a cancel location effect, starts to become a little more significant yeah, if you're totally. trying to stay under a, a barrier. You're okay with things leaving play. Yeah. Well, and that's yeah. where, like, a lot of the cards you've been seeing trigger off of discarding. Mm -hmm. So it is, like, if it's, like, discard any location, and you can get under their command for some other effect that you yeah. really want. But the interesting part of that is if you have less at your command than your opponent... They've got yeah. either more options or more board. <laughs> and so it's, yeah. it's, it's a, I think it's a cool mechanic to like almost insert into the game that you like come from behind. Mm -hmm. 
aspect where it's like, hey, if you get too far ahead, I'm going to start getting really good. Yeah, yeah, I'm interested to see where this goes, certainly. It's cool. Oh, I love this next card. Yeah, next up we have Scaling Ladder, a one-cost Greyjoy attachment siege and item traded attached to a location. <laughs> it gets crazy. Uh, while attached location is knelt, its controller cannot declare defenders during military challenges. All right, hold on. Let, let's go back. First of all, uh, command, we haven't... Uh, I didn't really know what it was at, at until command. a little, little uh -huh. while ago. So command is the cards on the table that mm -hmm. you control, the cards in your hand, mm -hmm. and shadows. Shadows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically anything on the board aside from your deck or your discard pile, dead pile, that kind of stuff. Um, so that's the command mechanic. Important to get that because yeah. I'm sure there's people watching uh, <laughs> well, that didn't know that. What's command? Um, and what I'm seeing in cards like this is it's playing to that command thing by controlling rather than removing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I see we're seeing it in Greyjoy. We'll see it in some other cards <laughs> down the road. And that's going to make it a really interesting and kind of dynamic game if this command becomes a more, uh, you know, prevalent uh, thing in the game. Where it's like, well, newly made lord could discard that location, or I could just kneel it, mm -hmm. and then I don't have to worry about the command loss there. Totally. So it's, it's anyway. So scaling ladder, Robert. What do you what do you think about this? This I think in my mind are is one of our first bananas level cards. Um, <laughs> it's crazy. It's, it's bananas. It is bananas. Um, like, if you just don't have an option to declare under whatever condition, and this one isn't terrible, uh, defenders during a military challenge, the most potent probably of all the challenges in the game, that's terrifying. It's yeah. absolutely well, terrifying. I mean, Especially for Greyjoy, who are kings of the two claim challenge. I'm just picturing, Ooh. there's there's all sorts of things that go on in my brain when I see this. And some of those things aren't even playing them out of Greyjoy. Yeah. You have to realize, if you win initiative, you let your opponent go first, they are going to need locations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then once those locations are now, your turn comes, oh, I'm going to attach this to your location, and this turn you cannot block. Yeah. And next turn, if you use that location, you cannot block. Yeah. So I'm thinking things where you get two military challenges or unopposed bonuses that are off, off the chain or like in a siege deck, mm -hmm. where it's just like, hey, I played two epic battles this turn, and guess what? You cannot defend. W worse yet, think of all of the powerful locations that this effectively shuts down. Street of Silk, Flea Bottom, even Lannisport Brothel. Just these cards that everybody mm -hmm. knows without question. When they hit the board, things are about to change and or get saucy. And it's like, this attachment makes it too much of a risk to ever bother Temptation using this manners, game. Yeah. Of mine, it's it's like, nuts. See, it's nuts. And, and here's, the, I mean, this, we're yeah, seeing, so. we're yeah, seeing no new decks. Uh, I don't know. There's definitely new decks coming from this alone. Like, because as a Greyjoy player, I'm looking at these cards and, I, and my brain is going, like, what can I do with this? Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing more and more that there's, this feels very Damon to me. <laughs> we can, uh, remember, we talked about the Red Queen's Faithful last year about, yeah. I'm going to give you options that don't fit into the current mold. And what I'm seeing is, like, I really want to run very location light with Greyjoy, and I want to run attack from the C plot that kneels all locations. I want to run Gorold. I want to run three of these guys. Can you imagine? And I want to make yeah. You choke a, them out. With it's the a location. four five one. Yeah. Like I'm gonna put this on you, and then I'm gonna kneel all your locations, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna get free military challenges as much as I want. And maybe <laughs> I'm gonna plot twist into the two military challenge plot. Like. There's all sorts of cool things. You run Die by the Swords, run Price of Wars. <laughs> I'm just picturing, That's I mean, crazy. if you have Wintertime Marauders that can't be blocked, can't it's be like, blocked. all right, cool. Yeah, and See ya. support a Harlow like I've been doing with him recently, like just standing well, back up. And then again. You, <laughs> even just pairing this attachment with Gorold, who can discard a card to Neil, it's like, you have to get rid of that location or attachment, or you're not blocking for military for the rest of the game. You've got yep. to do it, yeah. Like, it is awful. That's and, a fantastic. And card. heaven forbid it powers Price of War, like... Discard too, you know. <laughs> See, <ya. laughs> See you. So it's really, I mean, this is what we want from cards. Like, yeah. this this whole suite so far has been awesome. For both of us. I'm really impressed with the facts so far. Yeah. Next up, three cost unique Lannister character, Lannister. Damon Marburn. Looks very cool, by the way. Yeah. I like that is he's he, kind of the most rugged man? Lannister that we've yeah. seen. <laughs> you just don't know. Three cost, intrigue, power, Bannerman Lord, no crest, any phase. Discard a card from your hand to choose a character. Till the end of phase, that character gets plus three strength during intrigue challenges for the banner for each bannerman character you control. Underwhelming a bit, I would say. It is. Uh, it's it's a little disappointing. Um, this is neat. Um, it's definitely well costed, decent trade, a decent strength, all that kind of stuff. But 
I don't think this is the effect that Lannister would have liked to have seen. Mm -hmm. uh, there's too many ways that Lannister can do other things that are as good or ultimately better. But hey, they do draw a lot, and that means they can discard a lot if they want to. So mm -hmm. it's not a complete waste. Well, so it does. I mean, I, I'm picturing when I played you know, like Power Behind the Throne, right? Mm -hmm. It's what obviously comes to mind first thing. And there are times, you know, when Cersei's either not on the board or I've killed her or whatever intrigued person, Littlefinger, Asha, whoever. Yeah. Um, and But you do have, like, six of these little one-strength guys out. Mm -hmm. And it's, like, it's interesting because you could do a lot of intrigue challenges with, like, no one good on the board mm -hmm. uh, with this guy out. Totally. And it's, like, oh, I'm going to tackle this one-strength one strength intrigue guy. And it's, like... You can't block it. Are you going to block <laughs> You that? know it's going to be four. Right. And you can't yeah, block it. Yeah, at least. Yeah. I mean, it's, like... It's I don't true. know. I think they're. It's not like mind blowing, but at the same time, it, yeah. it does it play to their purpose. strength yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. And I do like it for a lot of reasons. Not only getting the strength barrier, like to the four strength that you need to hit like a terminal schemes or whatever. Yeah. But also, this is a great little um, bang against burn, which it's is true. a huge problem for That's power true. behind the throne. Yeah. So now you know Cersei comes in for that very first intrigue challenge, mm -hmm. and she's you're getting her plus three right off the bat against well, Targ. Unless they it, burn her down, it before. forces yeah. you to burn her down beforehand. Yes, which, which is better you for you. Do. Yeah, because some it, a lot of times you know a player will attack with Cersei, and I'll be like, all right, that's cool, mm -hmm. and then I'll just burn her, <laughs> and yeah. and they don't get that intrigue challenge. But yeah. now it's like, well, if you're gonna burn her, you better do it it's right, right away. It's not a surprise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. you need like you need multiple effects a lot of times to get that strength down. Mm -hmm. and so it's like, you trigger one burn effect, well, I'm going to trigger plus three. Now you've wasted that, and it's into the phase. Yeah, so it, it, she'll be safe. It's cool. I, yeah. I think he has, has a place cool. somewhere. Um, but again, like you said, a little bit vanilla for a Lannister. Maybe not exactly what yeah. you want. Um, who are we going to? I, I got Ashmark? Yeah, you do. Good. All right, so one cost unique uh, Lannister location looks beautiful, guys. Come on, I'd live there. Oh my gosh, who wouldn't? Why are we not living in this time period where this actually was? This <laughs> actually happened. Like they would build yeah, castles. Probably because there's like continuous war on and stuff. awesome <laughs> places. It's a stronghold. Any phase action, discard a card from your hand to add one gold from the treasure to your gold pool three times per phase. Paul love it on this one. Yeah, Paul I love it. Indeed. I think this is. We've talked about Lannister and what are they? Like, mm -hmm. where does their house lie in the grand spectrum of balance? Are they a gold house? Are they a, a card draw house? Yeah. Are they just all resources? House of God. And I feel, like, <laughs> I feel like this is a significant departure from what we've seen where you're now starting to play significantly with a gold pool. Yeah. And with effects that require gold, and you can use this at any time, mm -hmm. you no longer... like. I remember the uh, the dude where you pay one gold, name a trade, and then people like that can't block. Or if you have more gold in your gold pool, you get X effect. You can spend all that gold, yeah, discard totally. a card, and boom. Or now just, you, like, you turn on all those effects. End of challenges, I've got, you know, Dominance, Tywin out in play. It's like, oh, I need four gold. I only have two. Two cards, four gold. I win Dominance. I get three more power for winning Dominance. It's dangerous. I think this is a fantastic well, card for Lannister. Yeah. I think what's... I'm just really intrigued by these one cost locations that have pretty powerful effects yeah because i'm thinking would i pay three for this mm -hmm. and i just might yeah <laughs> like if i if i got a deck that's got Conditions solid right. draw like if i'm baratheon and i've got val laughing storm and i'm i just have 15 cards in my hand all the time mm -hmm. it's like that's three gold a turn well, well think about what martell does right quite frequently and drawing you know their entire deck into their hand yes they have all these cards at their command now but who, what Martell, what, what player wouldn't pay three gold for this to turn, uh, you know, gold. sixteen of those twenty-four cards into sixteen? Well, you, it's only three times, but uh, you know, they have but the potential I mean, overtime. Like, right, it doesn't, like, it doesn't heal three. Three. Yeah, so exactly. It's immune to like control that we've seen in this pack. Yeah. Oh wait, it's phase, so you can yeah, totally. Yeah, I'm saying plot, that. discard three, draw, discard three. I was thinking Marshall, discard three. Wow. That, that's you can have like terrifying. Then. Wow, yeah. this, this is better than I thought of. So that's I'm all these one cost locations that are just super powerful. I think there's more in, in the splashing realm of this game than people have and, won. Yeah. And it, make, it makes you think, am I going to dreams this as it's just one gold? Like, right. it's super cheap. Do I want to waste my agenda on this one little location? And it's like, well, sometimes you do. Yeah. But it's a hard decision to make. Might. <clears throat> so that's, well, I mean, that's saucy. Imagine, uh, just we got to hop into this for a second. Yeah, so go you, let's say you dreams it, right? Pre-plot, it's like, all right, I'm going to discard one to get a gold. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, all right, rule by decree. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Like, you can open it. If you dreams with this, you can open with three. That's gold, fantastic, man! And they get their hand reduced. That is that's fantastic. That's crazy. I love that. Yeah, it's like straight, straight up. up. Like, I love that. Get out of here. So it, I don't know. That's just, that came to mind. 
maybe it's worth. How good is that though? Like I would open, I would, I would dreams that for that opening every game. Because wow. you, you lose a, That's you lose insane. a goal, but that is so you, massive. You gain the goal back from discarding. Yeah, you gain you a gold, are, the, and then your opponent goes lose down a to card, four cards. Gain a gold, and they lose three cards. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love that. I love He's that, a, man. You're going back to that great Joy Lannister line. And they can't keep up. There's no way they can play three cards out. No, no, no way they can play never, that game. Never, never. I love that, <laughs> yeah, man. That's pretty much cool. more things. Excellent. I think that's awesome. All right, next up, I'm I'm really taking a shine to this one the more I think about it. Uh, a one-cost Lannister location, oddly. Uh, a trebuchet. It is siege and weapon. Any phase, discard trebuchet from play to give each of your participating characters plus X strength until the end of the challenge. X is the number of cards in your hand. <laughs> That's great. That's crazy, man. I love this. It's it's wow. so juicy. It's like, wow. how, how much are you willing to block for? So oh, this card costs you nothing. It costs you one gold. The flavor of this card is, is just The art is also incredible. Look at the size I of this. I mean, I'm just picturing a situation. You know, you're playing against uh, Power Behind the Throne. Mm -hmm. so it's, again, the throne going, yeah. I mean, that's the go-to line. Uh, you're playing against Power Behind the Throne, and they've got all these little dudes out. And you play Breaking and Entering, mm -hmm. or some two-claim plot. You're going to get two intrigue challenges. Normally, I'm thinking, all right, I'm going to kill stuff, and I'm going to try to not lose an intrigue challenge. Yeah. But if the first player action you take is, I'm going to discard this and give all of my characters on the board six strength, yeah. or four strength, you are going to win any challenge you want that round. That is and absurd. It, and again, like again with PBJ, it's what's it going to start triggering? It's going to make an example, not make an example, uh, no, is it make it went by eight strength. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> terminal mean, schemes, all these other you things. You can rush really hard with this. Yeah, thing. it just opens it up. A couple of things important to note, I think, is that this has to be done within the challenge. Correct. So it has to be participating characters. So mm -hmm. th this is, again, one of those concepts we talk about sometimes uh, where I, I always get it wrong with the tiger reference. <laughs> like, this, if this were an event, it would not be as good. Correct. Because you, you throw this on the board, and all of a sudden, your opponent is in that position where they have to eat a challenge, mm -hmm. commit a lot to eat a challenge that they're going to lose just to get this off the board. And that's awful because if they just let this sit there and they're like, well, I can't block this, I'll just trigger that and win, you'll, then fine. you'll win forever. Yeah. <laughs> you'll never fine. win a challenge okay. again. It's, well, and even it's if, damned if you do, damned if you don't. Even if you force them to overcommit and then don't trigger it. Well, yeah. I mean, like I, I routinely told you how frustrating it was to play against your Greyjoy Raider plus or uh, anything plus warship stack because it's like oh scouting vessel well they're they're blocked so not or their strength is canceled so I have to de declare more uh, participants into the challenge or naval escort your strength is boosted dramatically I have to still declare more or again you just selectively not do it because it's like oh he overcommitted well whatever it's one challenge <laughs> don't care about that <laughs> I'll, yeah. I'll win the other two hands yeah. down and he has nothing else to uh, attack with on his turn and all this kind of stuff it's crazy it's a very interesting card for sure yeah I love great it. for Lannister too playing off the hand size mm -hmm. and allowing you to get gold I what synergy? Yeah, All right. Awesome. Nice. Next up, we have a three cost unique Martell character. <laughs> this guy's crazy. Bannerman House Dane, three strength, military intrigue, Edric Dane. Any phase, discard a card from your hand to choose X characters until the end of phase, those characters gain. Immune to events, X is the number of Bannerman characters you control. That's all. I mean, the first thing, obviously, this is bleeds. Bleeds, this is bleeds. Westeros bleeds territory. Bleeds. Uh, wow. I mean, you can trigger this multiple times, like we talked about. So. Discard a card, choose a character, immune events. Discard a card, choose a character, immune events. Do that three or four times. Drop your Westeros bleeds. It's a one-sided valor on yeah. steroids. Yeah. No drawback. Um, this is scary for, for bleeds. I mean, and then other than that, you can protect stuff from die by the swords. Stark's coming in heavy on military. You know, you can protect anything that you need protected, your Arion or whatever. Mm -hmm. Red Viper's already immune to events. It just... It, it, it really is going to solidify Martell as the event house to me. It's true. Also worth thinking about, like when I think about characters that would like to be immune to events in general. And Every one of them. Well, <laughs> I mean, if you imagine characters that suck when they get nightmares, mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, you can't do that anymore. <laughs> All of them. Which makes me think of Beric. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, I'm going to discard a card as first action, and now he's immune to events for the challenges phase. Thanks. Mm. Mm. Thanks for that. Can you imagine? It's being over pre plot. I mean, yeah. They can't, they yeah. can't nightmares it. Uh, I don't know, man. I think this is a devious it's, card it's for scary. Martell. It's scary. Like, everything that Martell felt like they lost with the last cycle of FAQ and all that kind Speaking of thing. Speaking of which, I think, like, go ahead. just gained back. It, it was pre gained back. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think five of the top eight at Nationals were. Yeah. 
Martel. 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 So um, they just had to build new decks. So they, anyway. they can go home. <laughs> not can go that home. new either. Yeah. <laughs> not that new at all. It's like I can't believe you what you were doing when this wasn't restricted. That you ignored these decks. Yeah. Like what? <laughs> Of course it was. Okay, so uh, moving on to the one cost. Wait, is it my turn? Yeah, my you're turn? Up, And moving on to the one cost, South Run Stronghold. It's a unique location uh, for Martel. Again, nice looking place. I'd hang out there. Uh, any phase, discard a card. Wait, important to note also, this is one that we haven't seen. Most of these have just been strongholds. This one is also House Dane. It's a big deal. So that could have impacts with the House Dane synergy. Um, from what I remember, it's mainly in the character arena, but yeah, I think you're right. looking for House Dane cards or searching out House Dane cards uh, could be a thing, and I love that House Dane is becoming more and more interesting. Yeah. Uh, has it any phase, discard a card from your hand to stand, south on stronghold, and it's plus one gold with one influence. So this is... Just card a card to get one influence any time that you need it. Sweet. I Seems think this good. is a fantastic card. Yeah. Fantastic card. <laughs> influence battery. Go. Plus one, one influence, and you can discard to stand at any time. So you can always play your Princess Wrath, or you can get uh, up to two influence for your Red Vengeance, trigger, get it back, and then do it again. Like, really good stuff here. Just yeah. love it. It's worth it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna again go. Uh, there are obvious uses to this. Martel's gonna love it. It's gonna be great. Love having influence, but. First thing I'm thinking about is my burn deck, and obviously having more influence is great. But pain three, uh, the the particular interaction I, I like thinking about is forever burning. Mm -hmm. So you play throw from the north, you have this on the board, and then it's like you can literally do a forever burning for every card in your hand if you want. Hmm. I'm gonna play it. I'm gonna kneel this, discard a card, Imagine. put it, have the influence, put it back in my hand forever, like. Just that could get interesting. Mm -hmm. Just put it out there. That could get interesting. I'm saying. I get maybe that is the point of forever burning. It is forever. It's right. forever. <laughs> I'm gonna trigger this effect 13 times. Yeah. Yuck. I did kill a Viper's Manor once with Forever Burning. What? Okay, next up. Zero cost, Martel attachment, poisoned well. Great S art, by the way. Siege traded, yeah, it is fantastic art. Uh, attached to a location, uh, response after attached location's effect is triggered, return it to its owner's hand. <laughs> okay, first question. It says triggered. Does that also imply resolved? No, I don't think so. So if it's triggered, does it bounce? Do they get the the effect? I think they would still get the effect. Okay. I every again sometimes it's weird in Thrones, but like yeah. all of my card gaming history has been once that trigger is <laughs> yeah, the effect I'm very is nervous on the way about like making a yeah, call one way or the other. Kind of got to stand around. Now this is something. <laughs> I'm just gonna put it on on the table for a second. Again, I'm going splashy. I don't know why. I'm just thinking about other cards here. It's time. Uh, I'm thinking about Rain's Hill. And yeah. put it on your own hill uh, to trigger it. You can put it on your own stuff that <laughs> triggers and goes back to your hand. No, that's gross. So you could also attach it to, like, if I'm Baratheon, I could, I could potentially attach it to, well, I guess you have to pay two at that point. Yeah. So there's just, it's interesting. There's cool stuff you can do. <laughs> now, I, I don't know that we will, uh, I don't know that we'll see this a lot outside of what you're talking about, which is... Uh, you using it on your own broken stuff to get it back, mm -hmm. like a discard to do awesome things, then you get it back. Um, I think that's where the majority of this card is going to be seen because otherwise, it is a kind of an attachment that you put on an opponent's location and they can't really do much with it as mm -hmm. far as triggering. But again, like, are you going to stop triggering your Street of Silk because of this? You're going to trigger it once, it'll be canceled, this is discarded, and it goes back to your hand, you play it out again. Like, mm -hmm. It maybe shuts it down once for yeah. those typical locations. Um, so I think you're going to really see this abused in your your own like your recursion own. of locations. Yeah, decks. the only thing I can think offensively with this is that if there's a deck or a series of decks that are using some like high cost locations that somebody is going to pay three or four gold for, mm -hmm. it's out there and it is going to do something very important for them. You put it on there and then they get one use for four gold and then they're going to have to pay it again. And that's yeah. essentially... A, a sure. turn of marshalling with gold sure. wasted. Yeah, I can see that as well. For sure. Interesting card. Next up, three cost, unique, stark character, Moore's Umber. Yeah. Three strength, military power, Bannerman, <laughs> House Umber. Any phase, discard a card from your hand to choose a character. Until the end of phase, that character gets plus one strength for each Bannerman character you control. Seems pretty good. It's okay. Now, important to know, like, Wait for it. Seeing, this, <laughs> seeing this dude in a vacuum is like... He's okay, yeah. but Starks and free cards to get plus one strength with mm -hmm. doesn't really happen. Yeah, um, it does. It really doesn't. Now, just having this effect on the board, like we've talking about, is a big deal. Like you, you're gonna have to make the choice 
is he going to trigger that effect or not? Yeah. I'm blocking with four. He's got a three strength there coming in, and we're going to give him plus one. So it does it does help the Starks a lot, winning those battles, uh, but I think there is better synergy, which we <laughs> happen to know that to there may see. be some. There may be synergy in the way. <laughs> um, so Moore is by himself. Okay. Uh, but let's go to Northland Keep. Uh, one cost, Northland Keep. It would is non-unique. What's that? Would you live there? I would totally live there. Look <laughs> at that. It's beautiful. Uh, it's a Looks stronghold. Good. Any phase, kneel it to choose a participating character with higher strength and printed cost. Remove that character from the challenge. You can have three uh, of these out. You can have three of these out. Uh, Moore's Number does some serious work here. This mm -hmm. is where it happens. Um, not only is this a great card for your standard uh, awesomely costed cards, even stupid stuff like uh, Distinguished Boatswain, anything that's getting a strength boosted from various effects, like the Asai decks, where it's like yeah. plus five for every... All these cards oh, in Shadows, yeah. plus five. Tunnels of the Red Keep, huge. Oh, get Tunnels out of here. Huge beta Tunnels here. So <laughs> there's, there's a huge <laughs> yes. number of decks that this shuts down, including Greyjoys with Pumping with Iron Victory, Pumping yeah. with Naval Escorts. Um, just a massive control card for Stark here, almost assuring or that any, they can win. Any of those other things we've seen already, the Bannermans that boost strength, the Trebuchet, all these kinds of things. Yeah. Now here's here's a card in the same pack that's like, and check it's, yourself. It's non-unique. I, I, think, I think this one might become a pretty serious card for Stark. Yeah. Like to the level that Pintoshi was and is for Lannister. I, I could see this being that kind of card. So you're saying it'll be restricted. I could see it being restricted. <laughs> yeah. Um, I could too. It's, it's dangerous. But obviously the synergy with Morris is huge. I mean, mm -hmm. with Moors in this out, you can bounce any character that normal people are playing because they're always costed appropriately to their strength. So you pay in three, you get three strength. Yeah. Pump it to four, he's out of the challenge. I think, I mean, the lack of utility when you can't pump their strength is what concerns me about the card. Sure. Because there aren't, there aren't terribly many cards that have a higher strength than cost. It's fairly rare. They're either, either equal or the cost is slightly above their strength. Especially be, for Lannister. Beware some of the big armies. That's true. Like the Wildling Hordes. Mm -hmm. I know uh, Finn into that because the Wildling deck gives plus one strength. Um, and uh, yeah, Bannerman, I want to say, may be higher. Uh, but so I think some of those armies are definitely higher than their cost. Cool. And that gets interesting. But mm -hmm. I think, I'm wondering through plot effects, if there are ways to give strength to things that don't want to have strength anymore. Well, I mean, it, it, it at least puts a check on things like power of arms. You know, you want to run that deck or run those plots, that kind Scary. of thing. Scary, no. Um, yeah. And then uh, already people had been saying things like, well, King's Pavilion all over the place. And it's like, oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Scary. Yeah. Put some King's Pavilions down, you're bouncing everything during yeah. challenges. Yeah. Do they kneel to defend? What's that? Because when they kneel, they, they lose King's Pavilions. Yeah, that's it. right. So... Unless, unless they're not kneeling, you know, and there's plenty of those at least that don't kneel to attack or defend and all that. I can think of a thousand. Cer Cersei's it. little fingers, you know, uh, red viper, and this is a location effect, so red viper can get hosed by it. He can. You have to do some serious. I mean, one king's pavilion will do it. He is a little wiener though with three strength mm -hmm. for five costs, so you're gonna have to do some work. Punch him <laughs> up, but hey, you have an answer to him now. Yeah. Congrats. Congrats. Moving on. This is probably one of those cards that really drew a lot of attention. But anyway, it is the uh, Breaching the Wall event for Stark. House Stark only, in fact. Limited response. After you win a military challenge, choose and kill any number of characters with a higher strength than printed cost that are controlled by the losing opponent. Uh, limit one limited response per round, of course. Hmm. This is... Not participating, not yeah, any of that. This is truly bananas, I think. Just scary. This is where King's Pavilion does become... Thank you for making a limited response. I hope they use this mechanic a lot more. Well... In this case, uh, I'm thinking of a couple cards from the pack. The one where you play it, they can't block their military. If they can't block and you have a king civilian out, all their characters are probably higher strength. And all of a sudden, it's like, boom. Mm -hmm. Especially if you have non kneeling things like Northern Cavalry Flank that like to potentially have king civilian, or if you just think burn's a big deal. Um, you need a number of characters. So choose I, again, and this this is kind of this is an event that when you when it goes off for you, mm -hmm. it's going to be. Significant, oh, probably game winning. Yeah. Um, how many times is this going to sit in your hand as your opponent is manipulating what you can and can't do? You don't mm -hmm. draw your cards that you need to boost strength, and it's just sitting there as kind of a dead fish the whole time. That can happen too. So yeah. uh, it, it's. I think it's a well balanced card. I think the effect should be limited. Yeah. It's so strong. And and the thing to note here is that. As of yet, um, aside from things like King's Pavilion, which again is conditional based off of being standing, 
Um, Moore's here is the only way that I can really call recall that has the ability to alter strength. And Martell, and it's done through discard, and Mar not Martell, Stark is awful for card draw. Yeah. So this will be probably tricksy. It's certainly a powerful effect, but who knows how easy it's going to be. I like where really they're be. getting getting back to just having wicked military challenges. Yeah. Just yeah. wicked. Watch out. I mean, you run the... You run, Don't let them win. These days you can run <laughs> lethal counterattack, breaching the wall, die by the sword, no quarter. Mm -hmm. And it becomes like... Offensive and defensive A big, a big scary thing. Yeah. And I'm thinking uh, like the frozen outposts and the frozen stuff where you kneel to stand and then give plus two or plus four... I'm wondering if you can use those on your opponents. I don't have the card with me. I don't play Stark enough mm -hmm. to know. But like, if some of those kinds of effects can actually be used on the opponent to stand them and give them plus strength. Yeah, man. Now we're now we're getting some serious. Well, I think here. you also. Uh, I don't know. I forget the name of the plot. I used it a little bit with the dragons, where during the first challenge, all characters Unique's get plus one plus strength. Plus one. Yeah. So this is a potentially really devious way to just remove uniques off the board <laughs> of your opponent. So there are ways I think. <laughs> To be decently consistent with giving your opponent strength when you want them to have it, mm -hmm. and then just making them pay. Yep. If those effects work as we're remembering. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some of them might be only your character is. I, yeah. I know that the plot is all unique during the first challenge. Yeah? Yeah. I believe that's right. Wow. Yeah. Incredible. That's scary. That's scary. Sheesh. <laughs> all right, moving on. <laughs> Uh, you want to kick Sir Raymond off? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Three cost unique, Targaryen character, Bannerman Knight, Sir Raymond Derry. Three strength, military power, any phase. Discard a card from your hand to put an attachment of cost X or lower into play from your hand. X is the number of Bannerman characters you control. He is a knight, so let's not forget that, that Targ Knight's kind of sneaking mm -hmm. back into things. <laughs> um, why? What do you think? Uh, Wait, it's a revisiting of, of themes, like Targ attachments, Lannister Gold, Martell events, yeah. Stark Military Challenge. Baratheon, great joy rush, locations. surprise, great joy locations, target attachments, like I said. I think there are some extremely interesting things you can do with this. I mean, the idea that you discard to just put an attachment into play, zero and one cost attachments, I mean, I'd have to go through and really look at those, um, even across. I don't think it's, uh, would an out-of-house card be... What would the cost well, of that be? This is, uh, put, a, put an attachment of cost X or lower into play from your hand. I don't think well, it the, counts unless you're playing the attachment. So, so this is the, the scenario that popped into my head. You have this guy out. You you have dragons in play. Uh, and they could be the, the full Monty dragons or the, you know, some of the weenie ones. But anyway, they're attacking. They declare defenders. Dragon you discard bite. nothing and put a dragon bite out. I can, you can't can do you that because it says X discard a card. You no, it says discard cards. So you have to discard at least one. Okay. I mean, you, but either way, being able to dragon bite in like that's good. Yeah. There, there are cards that are good at zero cost. It, it definitely does not apply in the out of house gold to that because, like in Lannister decks, we'll set Lannister uh, maesters will sometimes run burn and pillage and just throw it out. So, so you are you have available to you just for this guy out every one cost attachment in the game. Which I think could be awesome. Yeah. I mean, just from this this pack, scaling ladder. I mean, there's a lot of cards that you can <laughs> run, and Targ has you, you know you run the thing. Uh, the Targ has good attachment stuff. Yeah, so they very can, good. Because we play you play Danny's Chambers. Anytime you play a character, you can go get an attachment back. It doesn't have to be a Targ attachment. You have to play a Targ character, but it doesn't have to get back a Targ attachment. Surprise milk. So of the I mean, you could discard so nice. a milk of the poppy to put something else into play. Next turn, you play a Targ character and put milk of the poppy back into your hand. Um, they also have a lot of, you know, ambush from the planes, mm -hmm. things that play stuff from the discard pile. Um, what's the one that gets a mercenary back? But they have a lot of ways to get stuff from the discard. I can see it being interesting. Recruitment. Yeah, recruitment. Yeah. I can see it being interesting. Um, I would really want to take a, a look at all the zero and one cost attachments from across the land. He's definitely a, a thing. Yeah. This yeah. is definitely a thing. Part of the deck. <laughs> He's a thing. Uh, well, let's go to Castle Dairy. Uh, since we saw Sir Raymond, here's his castle. It looks pretty nice. It's a stronghold. It's immune to plot card effects. It's zero cost. At the end of the standing phase, claim one power for your house if you control more attachments than each opponent. Pretty cool. That's the thing. Seems okay. Yeah. It's like a free dominance. Why not? It's zero cost. Seems okay. I mean, you have this and maybe Meraxi's out. You're going to probably win dominance and you're going to get... Yeah. So you're getting two power a turn. Clocks are ticking. Looks like a pretty defensive deck. <laughs> I feel you can like build we're playing Star Wars all of a sudden. I feel like <laughs> I feel like this is actually pretty decent for burn. To be honest with yeah. you, yeah, because you get that solo up, take a power. If you have a, you know, if you can just have one attachment on the board, you probably are going to get it. I like it. 
Yeah, I like and it. even if just there's that one character they have out there that got, uh, you know, flame kissed or dragon skulled or anything like that, it's like I didn't happen to kill Mister, but I'm putting him in a power because of it. And then I'm going to kill him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, I mean, yeah, you can pay for it. I don't know. You may have one in the deck. Yeah. That kind of a thing, but we'll see how good it gets. All right. Next up, we have Rain of Fire, a would be a Targaryen event. Look at that uh, art. Uh, play only if you control at least one printed printed. Uh, dragon character challenges phase. Discard all attachment cards from play. Then discard the top card of your deck for each attachment discarded by this effect. For, I mean, for, this is the first scene that you really understand how terrifying it would be to have dragons attacking, attacking your city. Yeah, there's nothing you can do there. That is so scary. Is that Heron Hall? You think? It's I don't know. so scary, man. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's intense. <laughs> Unbelievable. It's really so I mean, we've seen lots of, in my mind pretty good attachments this pack so being able to remove those from your opponent boy they play I mean I'm talking climbing spikes frozen solid uh, milk of the poppy flaming swords oh yeah. great all the all the attachments that are kind I feel like attachments have kind of worked their way back into the game and yeah. this has the potential to just make sure that they don't have attachments on the board and you don't have to do anything I mean you just, just play, play it dragon. Just, yeah you gotta have a dragon but you just, <laughs> just play it you know there's no cost you don't have to kneel influence you don't have to pay gold or anything surprise you have, to, you have to discard some cards out of your deck and a lot of times you want that anyway in Targ so. also the uh, what's the Martell they claim power when they lose I can't think of the name the what again the Martell attachment they claim power when uh, they lose. Uh, taste, for taste for Blood oh, Taste for Blood yeah, yeah it's like Ooh. get out of here get out of here I, I think this in Melee is fantastic by the way dragons yes. in Melee are good this card in Melee is awesome yeah just don't mill yourself. I, I'm just really glad, yeah, that it's all attachments. You don't get to, like, choose any number. It's just mm -hmm. all of them. Get mm -hmm. them out of here. Yeah. Dragons are burning everything. Yep. Uh, Storm the Gaze, Zach? Yeah. Uh, Siege Tactic. It's a House Baratheon or House Greyjoy only event. Uh, dominance, kneel three influence, or pay three gold to discard all kneeling characters from play. Well, okay. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh that's crazy. That is indeed huge. I mean, I think Greyjoy and Baratheon both have an interesting Knights of the Hollow Hill build now. Um, if nothing else, just for this event, mm -hmm. makes things interesting and weird. Uh, great synergy with like Relentless Persecution. Uh, even the fact that they don't know this is coming just can really screw things up. Yeah, great art too. And they discard everything. I mean, you're on a Greyjoy deck with three of these and three Westeros bleeds with a bunch of influence. It's gonna be very hard. Yeah, to keep, keep things on the board. board. <laughs> Including the Greyjoy stuff, so. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Mer and Mer can save for, or not, uh, I'm sorry, Wendy can save from discard. But. At a certain point, they're just going to wonder with this card now in the mix, like, why isn't he kneeling for anything? Yeah. <laughs> oh, interesting. <laughs> Unopposed. <laughs> Five minutes later. <laughs> ah, I, I wish this was Targ. That'd be awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, It'd be disgusting. It would, be, it yeah. would not be it good. It would be too good. I'm glad they did good. it. But. but I will say, after all these strong events you've seen, Paper Shield is looking better and better because a lot of them yeah. don't have uh, that, that kind of a cost. It's true. Uh, wow, that's a really good one. And let's finish it out with Rally Cry to 301, which is usually the signal for effect is really bananas. Sure. That usually is what happens with this spread. <laughs> uh, when revealed, choose and discard one character or location with cost extra lower controlled by the player with the most cards at his or her command. X is the combined number of plots in all players' use piles. Uh, this is a huge plot for melee, right off the bat. Huge yeah. plot for melee, because by turn two, you can discard a four coster, which, wow. Yeah. Um, which it, most of the command, usually the guy winning, so it could be a big thing. Even in a joust, though, like, so by turn two, you can discard a two coster. Mm -hmm. By turn three, you can discard a four coster. Yeah. And now we're getting into some serious, serious stuff. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, this, this plot will see play, mm -hmm. I think. It answers a lot of things. It answers a lot of things. It is a bit conditional, though, at yeah. the same time. You've got to have... you got to be losing, really, most of the yeah. time. You I mean, sort of. Just have to watch it, because it's... Command is weird. You can still save from this. It's not like a march to the wall yeah. or anything like yeah. that. Like, like I said earlier, I'm really interested to see how the command mm -hmm. effect plays out, because mm -hmm. I don't really know how often there's a big spread in command. I think there'll be certain decks that are built, and it's like, oh, I never have command. It's really strange. I play... 10 cost characters. Mm -hmm. um, and then there will be other decks that you'll realize quickly, I draw too much, I play too much, I have, like, I have a problem with being ahead. So I think it really, in a, a month or two, we'll know how, how big a deal the command effect is yeah. and 
get a better readout on some of these cards. Clever little mechanic, by the way. It yeah. really it leverages yeah. things. Yeah. I feel like yeah. it, it involves a lot of math. Yeah. <laughs> Let me count things. What's your command again? <laughs> and as I think as command becomes a more prevalent thing in the game, we will continue to see whether or not people are willing to sacrifice their overall efficiency and strength for appearing to be a little bit weaker than yeah. they truly are. It's like, totally. I could draw three cards right now, but I'm choosing not to trigger. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to. Yeah. All I have to say is that my burn deck is going to rock at command. But, but like, <laughs> even, even as you said, it's like, uh, take, for instance, people running more events, but then how does that affect your deck building? Because you can't play events and setup and all this kind of thing, so yeah. how's, how are the ripples from command going to, you know, spread out throughout the game? It's going to be really interesting. Yeah. Well, and, like, the traditional mode of thinking of, you know, I'm going to get some cheaper characters out there for claim soak, which mm -hmm. also helps my gold curve up front, may play out a bit different now. Because yeah. instead of playing the, the one cost, two cost, two cost as five gold, you may want to play Red White Burn. Yeah. Because he's one guy <laughs> and he can destroy. So there's, it's going to be interesting. The more effects we get that are based on command, the more important it's going to become. What a weird, I mean, because when you think about it, think about the rotation of, you have this hand and it was like, it doesn't matter what you're playing. If you're mm -hmm. playing cards, it doesn't like none of this matters because it's the same command. Yeah. Right. It's like I can play seven characters or one, and I still have the same command. Mm -hmm. So that, but ultimately it comes down to card draw. It's true. That really is what it is. The only real significant way to add to your command is to draw more cards than your opponent, mm -hmm. and or potentially to play more cards. events. Yeah, because a yeah. card in your hand is mm -hmm. equivalent to anywhere. Or the intrigue not. challenge gets weird now yeah. because now they're under your command. Now they can trigger their good effects. Lannister, Watch out, gotta, gotta look out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so fascinating. I think this pack overall uh, is is a home run. Really, nothing stands out as being oh my gosh too good. Nothing stands out as being no brainer going in this deck. Yeah. And everything is usable to me. I feel like every card has packs a lot of utility, but not so much that every deck of that house is going to use that card. Yeah, like, this is a slam dunk for me. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't really see it. it it's a really just well balanced flavor. Is like what this we is, have this is a pack I would want to draft. Like I would want to draft mm. these like, kinds of pick? cards. Yeah, they're <laughs> all so good. That's hilarious. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for watching uh, the unboxing of the Banners Gather. We have that pack available for pre-order on our web store. You can catch it at this link if you'd like. Uh, Actually, we'll, it's already out. Oh, uh, yeah. It's not even for pre-order. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's for order. order. <laughs> uh, but pre-orders did go out. Yeah, so subscriptions that's my brain have gone out and all yeah. that stuff. Subscriptions and pre-orders. If you want to get on that list of, hey, every time a pack releases, I want it, uh, just to show up magically. It's a good list. Uh, you, you can be on that list by subscribing uh, to our Game of Thrones subscription uh, service, and we'll be happy to help you out there. So if you guys need anything, as always, let us know. Check the store and... Uh, we'll be here yeah. to answer all your questions. <laughs> see you next time. So take care, and we'll see you guys next time.